people talk Real about talk, it, it is that all of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I uh, hope everybody has had a great week. Uh, I'm going to drop this on you. I decided to record this before a session I have with a client because it's just really been weighing on my mind. I wanted to do it live, but I really don't have the time in the day to set aside to do it at an optimal time where it really makes sense. So I'm going to record it. I'm going to put it up and I'm going to let you guys weigh in on it. Take a listen to this video clip that was actually put up uh, by Forgotten Kings, uh, shout out, major shout out to Forgotten Kings. I borrowed a piece, uh, a clip of what you put up. Hope I don't get deemed too hard for it, but I just really think that it's something that's necessary. And I wanted to give uh, the listeners and the viewers some concept or framing a context uh, for what I'm going to say, for what I will say after this. So just check this out and then I'm going to be right back. Okay, so, so define do for self. When I say do for self, you shared one of my tweets, uh, my videos, and I was actually a big fan of yours, but you shared one of my tweets uh, when I said black people need to stop begging the government and go and do for self out in our communities. You shared the video and called me an idiot. I didn't see anything idiotic about that statement No, 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 no. So when you say do for self, like what? Mm -hmm. Explain that. Okay. Okay, for example, uh, here in Albany, Georgia, we complain about our school systems a lot. Many of our young men can't read. Uh, they have very ho horrible literacy rates. We don't have any rehab programs here uh, for juvenile uh, offenders. What I decided to do, I started a program two years ago, decided to do for self, um, and I started taking children into my home. Uh, I started taking custody of kids from juvenile court, and I started molding them and training them and teaching them skilled trades, etc. Now I'm 21 years old. I just purchased a school here in Albany, Georgia to come back us being in the government funded schools that are not teaching our children's children what they need to learn. Um, so that's what I mean by do for self, simply getting up and going out and do it. So I have a the stereotype that I'm young black in America and I can't do anything because somebody's holding me down. So, Absolutely not. So a question. Me, you, me and you, some you, teenagers went and, go ahead, me and some teenagers went and bought a school and we just bought a school bus simply from going out and doing work. We decided to go fix our own communities. I'm not expecting anything from no politician. I'm not expecting nothing from Donald Trump, Joe Biden, or nobody. We're going to go do it for ourselves and that's what I believe we need so, to be doing. I can vote, sure, but nothing's going to change in our community. So you went to... Okay, okay. So now you get it. Here we go. And this isn't the first time. Um, those of you, first of all, let me start by framing this and uh, offering a disclaimer. Those of you who know me know that I go out of my way to keep conflict between me and other brothers to a minimum. Uh, not because I'm afraid of anyone. I think I've proven that. But more importantly, that I think that it's better to show unity. I think that it's better to understand that you're not going to agree with everyone about everything. There are some differences that I've had with different people. If I felt strongly enough about it, I approached them in private. We talked about it in private. Whether we came to an agreement or not, that's the last that was spoken of it. Uh, I have not gone public on a number of different issues. I've felt that I've gotten wronged in and a bunch of other things. I think that it gives... The movement of black eye, I think it creates a bunch of division and dissension uh, that we're not really in a position to overcome. And I think that men handle things amongst themselves. I think that uh, I do better going to a young brother who may be doing something I don't agree with or I may, be, uh, I may feel is out of line, but it's definitely out there trying. I do better going to them in private and telling them what I think and hopefully winning uh, an, a, a friend or a mentee that we can work together and talk and agree to disagree. One, So you know that when I do go after somebody and it's intentful that I've lost respect for them as a representative of the black community, especially as a black man, uh, because I don't do that. You know, there's the Charles Barkley's, the Steve Harvey's, those type of the Jason Whitlocks, those type of guys I have absolutely no love for because I think they work in opposition to the true movement. I think that they have decided to enrich themselves by playing along and uh, basically carrying out uh, the schemes and machinations of those who oppose us and uh, seek our demise. 
I have said this once before and I'll say it again. There's absolutely nothing more dangerous to black progression than a black person with a white agenda. And there are those who have been fighting and championing the Democratic Party uh, for as long as you can remember. Roland Martin has been one of them. Uh, we have consistently been uh, pushed and prodded and encouraged to vote Democrat without ever being given anything tangible in return. No other group does this. And no other group has voted since the 60s at a rate of 90% for any particular party. No group. No group is that loyal to one party. And definitely no group is that loyal to one party without having received something tangible. Now, we get a lot of symbolic uh, banter, gestures, uh, even uh, some legislation, but there has been no real true progress. If you trace the progress uh, of African Americans since the 60s, we're actually doing worse on a socioeconomic level than we were then. We have less ownership. Uh, home ownership has not grown. Uh, we can talk about so many different um, barometers and measurements that assess how a group of people have progressed and we're at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder in every last one of those major categories. So then, what have we gained by our loyalty and our commitment? Now, I'm here because, as you see in that video, you've got a 21-year-old who, in no way, shape, form, or fashion, can possibly grasp the magnitude of everything that's out there. But yet... In, in the last two or three years has done some unbelievable things that the average 21 year old simply doesn't have the mindset or the maturity to do. He's decided that he's not gonna wait on politicians to pass legislature, to create policy that is going to benefit his community because the entire time that he has been alive, he has not seen that done. He has nothing on which to base a hope that politicians are going to show up and solve the problem in his community. It simply isn't there. As a 54 year old, I can tell you that there's no basis for me to sit up and hope that politicians are gonna change the things that I'm passionate about, that they're gonna change the miseducation of black youth in America, that they're gonna change uh, mass incarceration, that they're gonna do anything. They talk the game, they do a lot of different things, but when you look at it, there's no policy in place. There's no shift in social, cultural, or economic paradigms that's created by those that we have put in place. So then I must believe that if we continue along the same path, we're going to get the same results. It's just simply how things work, right? Well, this young brother goes out and says, look, uh, we got a problem with uh, our men being, our males being uh, uneducated. Uh, which automatically, if you study penology or criminology, understand that uh, if you don't have a high school education as a black male, you're five times more likely to end up incarcerated by the age of 30. It's just hard statistics. Uh, and so we understand that there's a need to prepare. And when I say educated, I'm not talking about traditional uh, academic achievement, academic attainment. I'm talking about preparation. To me, I've defined in, in both in the miseducation of black youth in America and born in captivity, I define education as being the holistic preparation of black youth to prepare them and empower them to go out into a world that is inherently hostile towards them and not only compete, but win. And so what we know is Malcolm told us this uh, nearly 60 years ago that it is foolish to believe that you can trust your oppressor to educate your children to compete against theirs. It simply does not make sense. You have to really truly believe that racism doesn't exist. You have to really truly believe that there's no inequality in the US. You have to really truly believe that everything is on a level platform to believe that the system as it is designed will benefit black people at the level it benefits whites. Now, this isn't just in academia. This is in corporate America. This is in workforce in general. It is simply not designed to advance and empower black people. Now there are exceptions to the rule. We call them the talented 10th. Those are the ones who are simply so equipped, so prepared for whatever reason that they excel despite of. 
but they are the exception to the rule. You And uh, you've heard me say this many times, that as long as I remain an anomaly, I have failed my people. It is not until my people in general have the same opportunities that I've experienced, have the same level of success um, on par with what I've experienced, can walk out and make a decision and be decisive about what they want and find a way to go out and make it happen. Uh, to be in a situation where they can literally make a mistake that would cripple the average black person, but be able to overcome it, come back and be as strong or better than they were before. That's what we have to do and that's not being done. King Randall, 21 years old, at 19, decided that he was going to start being make a, being a different maker. Now, the thing is, this kid stood up and said, we need to start doing it for self. And for some reason, it offended Roland Martin. Uh, for some reason, Roly decided that there was something wrong with a young black male being outspoken, being confident, and being assertive. You know, I've had an issue with Roland since he ambushed Dr. Umar Johnson. No matter what you think about Dr. Umar Johnson, the principles on which he stood and was interviewed on, on the Roland Martin uh, show, whatever the name of the show was, uh, when he still was with TV One, uh, those principles, the one thing that he said that they took issue with was the greatest commitment that a black man can make to black progress is being committed to a black woman. That offended them. This wasn't a, 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 any attack against any other group. It was simply saying that to love yourself will be expressed in who you love. Who you love will be seen in how you love yourself. And so there's something true in that. Now, here's the thing. I've had a problem since then because they totally ambushed him. And take, now, again, Umar is a big boy. He can take care of himself. And this isn't about me being a champion or a cheerleader for Umar. I believe that there is a lot there. And I'll leave it at that. But one thing I can tell you is I've always been able to use Umar as a source of information. If he says something exists, I've always been able to find it. How he stands, what he moves, and how he does, I'll leave that to him. But what I can say is that's been the case. And there have been some things that he absolutely, another thing that he has said, in addition to that that statement about men, is that uh, white supremacy has absolutely no power without black conformity. Again, I agree with it. The moment we stop moving with the system, the moment we stop conforming to it, the moment that we decide that we're not going to play their game anymore, it loses its power. It has power because we aspire to be a part of it. It has power because we see ourselves in relation to what they establish as uh, uh, beautiful, the Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful, the Eurocentric idea of what's classy, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional. Uh, and on down the line, we're aspiring to it and we're losing sight of who we are. And when you don't have a sense of identity and self, you don't have the confidence to move and empower yourself. That's why any group that has sought to enslave a people throughout history takes away their sense of identity, their sense of spiritual awareness, their, their name. Uh, their cultural practices and replace them with their own. Why? Because they will never ever be truly at full power with someone else's system because that's not their origin. That's not where they come from. You can go all the way back and see that for, 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 for those who look at the Bible as a source of information and empowerment. You can see that all the way back when uh, the Chaldeans in, in Babylon had taken uh Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the first thing they do is try to change their eating habits, change the way they think, change their practices, introduce them to a new religion. Why? Because in doing that, you rob them of the self. The sense of self is what powers you. If you don't have a sense of identity, then you can never be who you are. And that's, the, that's what happened to us initially. We're still trying to rediscover ourselves. We're still operating under the understanding that we need to be what they expect us to be in order to be. And that's where we lose our power. And that's on any level. When I'm working with clients, the thing I'm like, hey, who are you? Not what the world says you are, not what your mom says you were, but who are you? 
what is your internal self? What is your heart? Your The center of your soul, what is it telling you about you? When you stop considering the random opinion of minimal-minded minimal people, what do you see in yourself? And see, what happens with King Randall is that somewhere along the line, he discovered he didn't need someone to do something for him. He was capable of doing it for himself and that if he wanted it done, he needed to go out and get it done. That if he went out and got it done, then all of a sudden other means of resources would all of a sudden present themselves because that's how God designed the universe to operate. But Rowley, now imagine being a black man hearing a young black brother who is now 21, not sure wh what age he was when he shot the video, but was 18, 19 when he decided he was gonna make a difference in his community. That's huge to me, understanding this generation. But imagine a black man, I don't know how old Roland is, I know he's definitely at least in his 50s, who has seen enough to know what our people really and truly go through on a regular basis Imagine being offended by a young black brother who says, we need to do for self. We need to stop depending on politicians. We need to stop depending on the government. And we need to do for ourselves. He's not the first person to say it. He's the first person at that age to, that I know that has actively gotten out there and made a move in his community. Literally taking kids out of foster care, taking kids out of the system into his home. And this is before he's 21. This is his resume so far as a 21-year-old. I've gone in the system and I've pulled kids out. I've taught them. I've educated them. I've empowered them. And I've given them something to go out there and fight for at 21. That's his resume. And it's Rowley's idea to attack him, to call him an idiot. Why? Because he specifically said that it's not going to come with the vote. Now, that goes against everything that people like Roland Martin push and stand for. It's the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is our savior, but the Democratic Party has done nothing for us. Hell, it was the Democratic Party that initiated the disintegration and destruction of the black family nucleus in the 60s. It was the Lyndon B. Johnson administration that ignored the, uh, the Monaghan Report, uh, actually titled The Negro Family, A Case for National Anthem action that was uh, published and presented in 1965 that said instead of using social programs for women and children, housing, food stamps, AFDC, all this other stuff, take the millions that you're going to put into that, put it into creating jobs, give black men jobs and let black men take care of their families. Talking about the impact of slavery on the black community and how it makes the black community a unique racial group that has to be that 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 has to be considered under a different light because of the impact of slavery. All of the stuff in that report was ignored, and we have now the total opposite of what we had in 1960. In 1960, about 75 percent of all black youth were born into two-parent households. It's reversed now. And we're seeing the impact of it and how our men are functioning and what level they're functioning and the, uh, the manner in which they're being herded into prisons, the manner in which that they don't have the proclivity, pro, uh, the proclivity or capacity to defend and protect our women. The fact that uh, the second leading cause of death for black females between the ages of 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. All of this comes from not having a balanced home, not having a true family nucleus through which true values, interests, and principles that serve us are being inculcated into the minds of black youth. That, it was under the Clinton administration that we have the worst crime bill you can ever imagine that has massively negatively impacted the black community that crime bill came under Democratic administration. Uh, this is not me championing, Repu championing Republicans at all because 
there's issues with that. This is sitting up saying that the right wing and the left wing belong to the same bird, and this, that bird has been shitting on the heads and backs of blacks from day one. The system was not designed for us to win. The, the system was designed to take advantage of us from as slaves and as freedmen. It has been designed and used to get the most out of us without giving us anything. When, my, when Martin Luther King discovered this in the late 60s and moved and shifted from integration to reparations, he was murdered. In 1999, the U.S. government was found to be culpable, directly culpable in, 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 in his death, in the fact that they literally set the ball in motion. I watched the tapes from that trial. You would be surprised the lengths that the U.S. government went to to take that man out. Now, it was kept quiet. I'm pretty sure there are all kind of confidentiality things on deck and whatever. But that trial presented some unbelievable facts that would absolutely blow your mind. I tell you now to research it, find it, and look at it. So when a young kid comes up and says, hey, this is how I feel, and this is what I'm going to do. What, as I said in the beginning, when I first began at this, this, this particular uh, segment, I said, look, the way that I move is if I have a dis disagreement with a brother, I go directly to the brother. This is what men do. Men don't ambush. Men don't ambush. And so what should have happened if you felt like he was out of line or there was something he was missing, but you could tell in the tone and the way that he's trying to set him up, he's ambushing him. He's not trying to truly get truth. He's trying to prove him wrong and make him look bad. Now, did it work? No. The young brother was able to stand his ground. The young brother was able. Now, you're going to get these Roland Martin cronies who will sit up and back Roland no matter what because they are the kind that are caught up in celebrity. And they will back him no matter what. They don't think for themselves. Roland does. And so they're going to, whatever Roland says, they're going to do. See, there's no man that I'm going to agree with 100% of the time. So the first thing I had to learn is if I am going to be effective in unifying, I'm going to have to be able to work with people that I don't always agree with. But we have to come to a conclusion to where we can talk to one another and truly validate that we are fighting for the same thing maybe not in the same way but we know we are passionate and believe in what we're fighting for and if that's the case we go behind the doors we don't show dissension to the masses so that we can create division among the amongst, amongst the masses we sit up and we talk about our issues behind closed doors and if it's something that we can't work out we keep it to ourselves and we keep it moving unless i see you as a danger or a threat to my people i'm not trying to put you on blast because it doesn't do anything but create more distrust more frustration, more division, more dissension, and it does not work. And when you see people that are constantly doing that, you got to ask yourself, what are you really here for? The truth of the matter is the Democratic Party has been the bread and butter of what Roland Martin does, championing Democratic candidates and office holders. That's what he does. He has presented to black people for years that the Democratic Party is the savior of black people, but we've got nothing in the way of intangibles. If you want to really look, just look at the first uh, couple of months of the presidency of Joe Biden. Look at how he's done and what he's moved and what moves he's made. Tell me what kind of progress has been made for blacks. But there's definitely been progress for the LGBTQ community. Definitely been pro progress for immigrants. And Joe Biden didn't mince word. I'm not mad at Joe Biden. He specifically said that that was going to be his focus. That was going to be his passion. That was what he was going to be working for. Blacks were told to vote for him simply because he wasn't Trump. We have been peddled this lesser of two evils bull crap for so long that we actually buy it. Well, let me see. If I'm going to be a righteous person, any form of evil is not something I endorse. My vote is an endorsement in who you are, what you stand for, what I what I say I believe in. If you don't represent those, you don't get my vote simply because you're not as bad as him or her. 
And then we got a question. We're talking about something that was sold to us that we actually bought into because we're so easily led by others that a person that's been in office for four years has caused more damage than one that's been in 40 and was directly responsible for the incarceration of hundreds of thousands of black males and females. And a, a, a vice president who took the very bill that he turned into law and probably used it more mal maliciously than any other um, state's attorney or attorney general in this country. That's what we're looking at. That's the truth. I put it out there. I put the facts out. I've talked to both sides. I gave balance. Those who believe in her even have to admit there are some things that need to be answered for. There are some things that have to be uh, reckoned. And from what I can see now, there's no reckoning. There's no attempt to sit up and say, you know what, when I did this, I was out of line. I was wrong. I thought it was going to be this, this, and this. And so in, in turn, this is what I'm going to do to offset it. This is how I'm going to create a reckoning for my wrong. That hasn't been done. That has not been pre presented. Matter of fact, she sit up and openly said she's not doing anything specifically for blacks. He has not mentioned how he plans to offset the devastation created by his crime bill. He's moving on to the things that he's championing, the LGBTQ community, something that started with Barack Obama and is carrying out. We have to be aware. We've got to be willing to look beyond what is being shown to us to see what's 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 moving in the currents underneath. We have to be willing to read. We have to be willing to research. We have to be willing to draw our own conclusions. We have to be willing to think for ourselves. Think critically, think strategic, strategically, and think sometimes um, outside of the box, laterally. But we've got to have a mindset that is not going to be guided by those who don't share our same values, interests, and principles. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. I got to get ready for a client, but I just had to come in and talk about this. Uh, I know there'll be some pushback and some backlash, but hey, you guys who know me know I don't care. I'm not here for the sake of popularity. I'm not here for the sake of being liked. And, uh, you know, when you like my, 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 my work, I appreciate it. When you share my work, I appreciate it. Um, and that's great, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to empower my people with what I know, what I understand, what I've spent the last 30 plus years developing in the way of understanding, reading, writing, books. Everything that I've done is for the sake of providing information and resources that will help people make positive decisions with their lives as an individual as well as a collective. And I will continue to do that despite the heat I get. I'm a big boy. I can take it. And on that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you